Rosa Catino, the Portuguese official responsible for a decade of bloody civil war. I must say that in Angola, I started what we could call the decolonization process. Because this started only when I arrived, arrived there. And, uh, well, I had this kind of job just during six months. But I think that I fixed the decolonization process in an irreversible way. Appointed High Commissioner of the Portuguese colony in 1975, Admiral Rosa Catino was the most powerful man in Angola. We found him in the Portuguese capital of Lisbon. After 10 years of silence, Rosa Catino finally agreed to an interview. Well, I was, first of all, head of all military forces. I was the commander-in-chief. Second, I was the executive, the, the head of the administrative branch. Let's say the go I had a government, I formed the government, and I directed the government. Certainly, certainly I, I had the influence and I exerted it. Yeah, you exercised it. Yes, yes, I, I am not platonic. In 1974, Angola was promised independence and Rosa Catino took charge. Rosa Catino favored the MPLA and devised a scheme to put them into power. All three Angolan leaders were invited to a hotel in Alvor, Portugal. Each party agreed to democratic elections under Portuguese supervision. To great acclaim, the Alvor Agreement was heralded as the cornerstone of Angola's future. But Alvor was a fraud. Elections were never meant to take place. I knew very well that elections could not be held on the territory during the time that lapsed because Angola was still in a kind of turmoil and if elections would be held it will be a fantasy. I stated that at that time the only solution was to recognize the MPLA was the only force capable of directing Angola and that the Portugal should make uh, separate agreement with MPLA and transfer the power to MPLA on the fixed date of 11 November. Spend most of my time in Havana, uh, well, having talks with, uh, with uh, the people of the ministers. I was interested especially on education and justice. 